Today, we're talking about self-actualization. What is self-actualization and the ideas of Abraham Maslow? And I'm really excited about this stream because Abraham Maslow is uh, one of my favorite psychologists. We're actually probably going to have to do a two-part to this video because there's just so much information. And uh, Maslow has actually had a very interesting and kind of sad and tragic personal life. I don't think we'll have time to get in that uh, today, but... Uh, maybe in the part two, we'll be able to talk about that. But in general, we're talking today about self-actualization and transcendence. And if you don't know what self-actualization is, this is going to be a really good video. And if you do know what self-actualization is, this is going to be in a very important video, uh, understanding it through uh, Maslow's uh, ideas regarding psychology. And it's very important in regard to inner star actualization. You know, Jung, Carl Jung is obviously incredibly important in an influence on inner star actualization. Uh, Abraham Maslow is as well, especially when it comes to creating a new world, new Terra, because as we go and reach the uh, tier of transcendence, it starts becoming a communal activity. You see, it's going to have a lot to do with community. So it goes beyond just personal growth. It has to do with personal growth, but also communal growth plays a very important part in it. So it's going to be good. I'm, I'm really excited about this stream. Hope you guys are too. And like I said, it's probably going to be a two-parter because there's just so much to talk about. But it's going to be good. So we're going to start things off by taking a look at this article, which is a video transcript from the Academy of Ideas called Abraham Maslow and the Psychology of Self-Actualization. We're going to get an idea of who Maslow is and what he was talking about and um, some of his ideas that are extremely important for Hyperionism and inner star actualization. So let's talk about this. In the early 20th century, psychologists were pri uh, primarily concerned – sorry, I just have to bring something up here – primarily concerned with the sicknesses that afflict the human mind. Abraham Maslow, aware of this one-sided approach, saw it as grossly inadequate. If the goal of psychology is not to just rid, of, rid us of illnesses, but also to help us flourish – then an understanding of what constitutes optimal psychological health is crucial. It is as if Freud supplied us the sick half of psychology, and now we must fill it out with the healthy half. So it's really interesting in that um, Maslow looked at psychology and was saying that, all right, it's studying the sick and trying to provide methods to help you know people who are ne having a neurosis and, 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 and help people who are sick. But... Abraham Maslow wanted to be like, hey, well, wait a minute. Not only should we about be about healing the sick, but helping humanity flourish as well. So um, you'll notice that a lot of psychologists would, you know, they, the psychologists often study individuals who are mentally ill. That's a big part of psychology. What Maslow wanted to do was study healthy people to understand how, you know, uh, how we can help people not just to rid them of, of what is negative, but to help them flourish and become more actualized. And uh, let's see, there's um, – and, and, and we're going to be talking about what self-actualizing is. And I love the definition. If you want to know what self-actualization is, I love this definition by Abraham Maslow. And it's this, that self-actualization is the process of becoming everything that you're capable of becoming. And I love that. That's I think that that encapsulates self-actualization uh, incredibly well. It's the process of becoming everything that you are capable of becoming. And in Hyperionism, all these ideas are extremely important because we don't want to just provide tools for people to heal themselves that may be mentally ill. We want to have people flourish and actualize and become their true selves, to transform themselves into everything that they are capable of becoming. And that's what inner star actualization is all about. It's not just this, uh, you know, dealing with dealing with issues, but it's about becoming everything that you're capable of becoming. And that's what Maslow is all about. Maslow was like, hey, we have all these psychologists um, and psychiatrists and therapists and everything working with people to heal them of their illnesses, to, to help them find you know the root of that problem, whether it's in psychodynamic theory or whatever. But hey, let's actually go further than that and help people flourish. And that's awesome. I love that. I love that. So So Maslow's research led him to the conclusion 
that what demarcates the psychologically flourishing from the sick and mediocre is the ability to self-actualize. So this is what he he studied, you know, so he was taking a look at, at, at healthy people, taking a look at sick people. And the conclusion was that those who are psychologically flour, flourish, flourishing between them and then the sick and mediocre, the thing that demarcated them, the thing that separated them was the ability to self-actualize. Those who were able to self-actualize were the healthy, flourishing individuals. Those who did not self-actualize were the sick and mediocre. So this is going to explore what it means to self-actualize and examine why most people struggle at this all-important task. That's very important because most people have, and, and this, is the, this is the thing, right? Maslow was seeing that the healthy individuals are those who self-actualize and those who are the sick and the mediocre are those who don't self-actualize. And hardly anyone in this world is concerned with self-actualization. And this is why the masses are the sick and mediocre. We have we have a we have a sick society. We have a sick and mediocre society. A society of just the blind clones who are all the same, who all think the same, and are all riddled with you know different mental illnesses. You know, so many people are suffering from depression and anxiety and 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 and, and so much more. And that's not to say I mean everyone's going to suffer with with depression and anxiety, but there can be steps taken to uh, take this from something, uh, remove it as being something that is just intrinsic and inherent to and generated by, by our sick culture and sick society. So uh, th that's, that's really important because in, again, in Hyperionism, in inner star actualization, the whole point is to build a world that is about increasing the quality of life for every individual in the collective. And in order to do that, we need to make sure that everyone has what they need to be able to flourish, to be able to self-actualize. Because you can't really blame the masses today. It's because the world does not give them the ability to self-actualize. Uh, in, in, in the point is, is that they provide them, uh, they're, they're not provided the tools that they need, and so they're at a disadvantage. And I mean, ultimately, what, what the problem is, is that the people are fighting to survive, to put food on the table, to pay the rent, all these little basic needs. And so they don't have time to self-actualize. So this world creates this mass sick society and we want to create a healthy, flourishing society. So according to Maslow, humans are driven to satisfy what he called a hierarchy of needs. Self-actualization occupies the pinnacle of this hierarchy. And therefore, we cannot begin to self-actualize until we have satisfied our most basic needs. These basic Basic needs include the things necessary for our survival, such as water and shelter and food, as well as those things required for a basic modicum of psychological health, such as safety, love, status, belongingness, and self-esteem. Only after these basic needs are satisfied, we can begin down the path of self-actualization and strive, in the words of Maslow, to become everything one is capable of becoming. And this is a quote from Maslow. Musicians must make music. Artists must paint, poets must write, if they are able to be ultimately at peace with themselves. What human beings can be, they must be. They must be true to their own nature. This need we may call self-actualization. It refers to man's desire for fulfillment, namely to the tendency for him or her or them to become potential, to become actual in what is potentially. I love that. I love that. I love that. It's perfect. Perfect. You know, besides the, the, uh, you know, gender binary here. Perfect. Perfectly said. And this is what's absolutely critical. And if, if humanity is, if a person doesn't have this, they're going to feel very, they're going to have a very uh, low quality of life. So let, let's, when we be, there's so much to talk about. I'm just trying to think, oh, there's so many different things I want to talk about right now. Which one first? This is why this video is going to have to be a two-parter because there's so much to talk about. When we begin the process of self-actualization, mastery of self becomes our way of life. Same thing in Hyperionism. Self-actualization as well as collective actualization becomes our way of life. Because imagine that society that we build when not only we are actualizing each other, but helping or actualizing ourselves, but helping each other actualize. And then we'll just have a, a, a society that's being uh, teleologically driven 
uh, to to increase the quality of life of themselves and each other. It's a beautiful system in which it's like a feedback loop of an increase in, in quality and actualization. Every moment you're getting that increase in you know satisfaction, fulfillment, quality, etc. So we view our psyche as a vast, unexplored terrain and are motivated to gain a greater knowledge of its inner depths. Rather than being driven solely by wealth or status, we must choose an ambitious and meaningful life mission. And that's the other thing. You have this the sick society, the sick mediocre masses that aren't interested in self-actualization at, at all. But what are they interested in? They're interested in wealth and status. Now, there's nothing wrong with having money. There's nothing wrong with having status. But when you place wealth and status as the goal above self-actualization, that's where you have a problem. And so you have a society right now that's not only a sick and mediocre society because the 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 uh, world does not give them, give, give people what they need to actualize, not only that, but then the masses, due to how culture is set up, like celebrity culture and, and who is praised and who is not praised, you know, celebrities are praised, the billionaires are praised, people end up desiring wealth and status over any sort of idea of self-actualization. So even if they had the means to, they wouldn't do it because they would be obsessed with wealth and status, not self-actualization. Wealth and status can come from self-actualization. If you become a brilliant musician, that may, may bring you wealth and status. But it's not, the wealth and status should, it should not be the goal. It's, it's, it's about actualizing one's, one's inner potential, being, being all that one can possibly be. So rather than being driven solely by wealth or status, we choose an ambitious and meaningful life mission. As we strive to achieve our goals, we devote our energies to mastering the necessary skills, and in the process, we actualize our latent potentials. Furthermore, as our life becomes increasingly structured around the need to self-actualize, Maslow discovered that we begin more, become more susceptible to peak experiences. Self, and this is a quote by Maslow, self-actualizing people have the wonderful capacity to appreciate again and again Freshly, uh, the basic goods of life with awe, pleasure, wonder, and even ecstasy, however stale these experiences may have become to others. So peak experiences have a deep therapeutic effect and can permanently transform our self-image and view of the world. While they cannot be voluntarily stimulated, Maslow discovered that they arise by spontaneously in self-actualizers far more frequently than in the majority of the population, implying that they are a byproduct of the, of the personal growth that self-actualizers experience as they cultivate their skills and strive to realize their potential. So what he's basically saying is that the common, a common theme with people who self-actualize is that a byproduct of self self actualization is a wonderful cap capacity for appreciation uh, the the basic goods of life with pleasure wonder and ecstasy it's 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 much more prevalent in self actualizers is what Maslow is saying now I want to show you real quick Maslow's hierarchy of needs here um, and and actually what I'm going to show you. And this is important for inner star actualization because in inner star actualization or, or in Hyperionism in general, we use the extended Maslow's hierarchy of needs, which adds um, an, an additional tier at the very top called transcendence. And this is why we're going to be talking about transcendence because it's very important. So let's take a look at these uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs here. And hopefully you can kind of see this. Let me get a little bigger. Uh, yeah, I guess you can kind how big can I make this here? Mm, that's about as big as I can make it. Well, hopefully you can see it. So you can see that there's this hierarchy of needs. And at the very bottom, we have physiological, safety, then love and belonging, then esteem, then knowledge and understanding, then aesthetics and beauty, then self-actualization. And that's where Maslow's hierarchy normally stops. But we use the extended hierarchy, which above that is transcendence. And so I'm sure that you've probably maybe have learned about this in, in school. Maslow's hierarchy is, is pretty popular uh, because it's very, very important. But it's interesting, isn't it, that maybe you learned about in school, but they don't implement this in life, do they? They know they recognize its importance by teaching you about it, but do they provide you with the basic needs that you need to self-actualize? Do they emphasize the importance of self-actualization? Do, does this society give you what, what is necessary for the accomplishment of this? No, they just be like, hey, these are the things you should have. I'm not going to get them, but now you, now, now you know. 
now you know that the world sucks and you're not going to have any of this. But right. So anyway, we want to build Hyperionism uh, in our vision for a new world. We want to make sure that everyone has this hierarchy, uh, all these needs satisfied so that so that we can um, focus on the highest tiers which is self-actualization and transcendence. But you see, uh, just a, probably most of you are familiar with this, but I'll give you um, a, a brief recap. So these um, first four here are the basic needs. And um, the basic needs are physiological safety, love and belonging, and esteem. And it basically says that you need to have these lower tiers satisfied before you start looking for the other tiers. So for example, the first one, physiological, has to do with breathing, food, water, sex, sleep, and, and excretion, and all these sort of things. So basically, it's saying that, um, and, and then above that is safety, which is security of the body, or employment, or resources, or morality, the family, health, and property. So basically, what, what, what the, the, the hierarchy is kind of saying is that these all come in different steps. So physiological, breathing, food, and water, well, if you don't have access to air, <laughs> food, or water, you're not really going to be able to be concerned with the next level of, of, of the hierarchy, which is safety, which is safety of employment, safety of resources, family, health. If you're not breathing and not getting food and not getting water, you can't do this other tier. Um, now, I want to remind you that this hierarchy is a model, so it's not 100% accurate, but it's a very useful model for understanding um, growth. Um, so then above safety, you have love and belonging, which is uh, friendship, family, and sexual intimacy, meaning that people are going to be looking at, you know, the security of employment and resources and their health before they can really focus on things like friendship and, and sexual intimacy. And then above that, you have esteem, which is self-esteem, confidence, achievement, and respect of others. And again... You're, you're probably not going to be looking at your esteem needs until you have the, the love and belonging needs met. So you can see how this is all in a hierarchy. First one seeks out physiological needs, then one seeks out safety needs, then one seeks out love and belonging, then one seeks out esteem needs. And again, this is just a loose model. It's not 100% accurate, but, but it's a very useful model. And these four are, these first four are called the basic needs. And so uh, there are more above this, but now above this, we start getting into the um, just, you know, the, these four are kind of just what you need to, to like base level, baseline. You need food, you need water, you need intimacy, uh, you need um, friendship, you need um, security of employment, and you need self-esteem and confidence. Like this is, this is kind of like bare minimum. This is bare minimum what you need. Now above that, now we start getting into uh, the, the higher stages of growth, where now we have knowledge and understanding, cognitive needs to understand one's surrounding environment. Now, um, you can see how most of the world doesn't even get to these, these higher, higher, higher places in the hierarchy. They're stuck below in just trying to take care of their health, take care of their family, make sure they have enough money and food and have access to water and, 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 you know, they hardly even get to the probably the, the esteem level, which is self-esteem and confidence and respect for and by others. Like people probably don't even everyone is struggling with these basic needs that they never get to the higher ones. Because, you know, if you're if you're busy trying to fight to put food on the table and make sure that your you and your family are healthy, you don't really have a lot of time for knowledge and understanding, which is one of the higher areas. And so do you see how when this when everyone is stuck in this uh, these four tiers of basic needs, no one's even going to get to the first of these higher tiers, which is knowledge and understanding. And you wonder why we live in such a sick, gross, disgusting, mediocre, terrible world is because everyone is fighting for the very basic scraps that they need. They don't have time for things like knowledge and understanding. They don't have the, they don't have time for it because this world doesn't give them access to the bare minimum. So, uh, above, you know, starting in the higher tiers, we have knowledge and understanding. Then above that, we have aesthetics and beauty, which is need to appreciate and search for beauty, balance, form. We can have things like art. Then above this, finally, is self-actualization. And, um, and the, the normal, the normal uh, hierarchy 
ends there. But we use the extended hierarchy, which above self-actualization is transcendence. And that's a beautiful stage, which is the need for helping others to self, self-actualize. self And this is what 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 is so integral to, to building a new world. Because so here's the thing. So first of all, this world doesn't give you even access to the bare minimum. Do you have guaranteed health care? Well, in America, you certainly fucking don't. Do you have, ac- you know, guaranteed uh, security of employment and income and food on the tape? No, you don't. You have to you have to fight for these things. So this world doesn't even give you the bare minimum, the basic needs. In our new world, we don't want to give people the access to the basic needs. We want to give access to all the needs that people need in order to flourish and grow so that they may focus on the, the top two of self-actualization and transcendence. This means food, this means water, this means safety, this means love and belonging, this means esteem, this means access to knowledge and understanding, which is, you know, uh, universal basic uh, income, universal, you know, free healthcare for everyone, the world's best, um, uh, you know, free housing for everyone, uh, the world's best uh, therapists, uh, so people can have extreme, you know, healthy mental states, um, access to the world's best education for knowledge and understanding needs, um, you know, uh, access to to um, the experience and uh, learning regarding art, all these different things. So in our world, you know, fuck this world that doesn't even give you your basic needs. We want to build a world that doesn't just give you your basic needs, gives you all the needs that you need to flourish so that you can focus on the top two. That's our world. Imagine this world, instead of it being this fight for survival, where all these tiers are already satisfied so that the world can be, so we all as a collective can be focused on the top two which is self-actualization and transcendence. And so self-actualization, we've seen what that is. That is about uh, being all that one can possibly be, becoming the best versions of themselves, the most actualized version of oneself. And then transcendence is the need for helping others self-actualize. And this is a need. When once, when one, especially in Hyperionism, when you understand what reality is and you start to become self-actualized yourself, in knowledge and understanding and growth, when you start to understand what reality is, and when you reach that level of transcendence, you have a need to self-actualize or, or, or to, to help other. You have a need to help others self-actualize. It's not like, oh, well, everyone should. Yeah, everyone should, but it's not about that. It's when one reaches a certain level, that level of transcendence, you need to help others self-actualize, just like you need food and water. And I'm sure that, you know, some Hyperion creators uh, can possibly relate to this and getting to that, that need, you need, you need to help others actualize. And just like one needs food and water, it becomes that, that strong. That's why I do what I do. A lot of people say, oh, you know, thank you for your work. I'm so, you know, you, it's so great that you do this. And, and I appreciate that so much. Thank you. But I need to do this. This is, this is what I need to do. Um, and I do it because, because it is that. It's what the world needs and, and, and it's what everyone needs is what, what I need. I, 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 I do this because it's necessary and I want to do it uh, and I have that need to do it. And so and, and this is very true, especially in Hyperionism, because once you have the uh, you know absolute perspective and you realize that we all exist in an interconnected network and that um, you know what I do affects you and what you do affects me, this need to help others self, self-actualize is even so much more. So we have this, so in Hyperionism, it's important to understand, very, very key, we use the extended hierarchy, which has transcendence on top, which um, once one begins to have their self-actualization needs met, they will eventually get to the mode of transcendence where they have a need to help others self-actualize as well. So once again, fuck this world that doesn't even, that makes you fight for the basic needs. Let's have a world where every single need is fulfilled to get you up to the part where we're fo- where, where we as a collective are focusing on uh, self-actualization and transcendence. And that's how we're going to have a beautiful world because, you know, all those positive aspects that come with self-actualization and transcendent uh, is just going to increase as we all uh, do so together. And so we have this world that self-generates a better world. It's a, it's a world that's just self-generating better and better versions of itself. Because as we self-actualize, the world self-actualizes. The world, when we reach that stage of transcendence, that's the world self-actualizing because it's the collective self-actualizing. Because the world's just made up of individuals. So we have this world 
that's that is self-actualizing through us and it generates better and better versions of itself just like when you self-actualize you become better and better versions of yourself when the world self-actualizes it becomes better and better versions of itself um you know having a much better society in which we're all you know uh flourishing and our quality of life increases that's what we want Qual increase in quality of life for every individual in the collective and compare that to the world that we have now Compare that to the world which is constantly in division, constantly fighting each other. We're all, you know, on the brink of nuclear war. <laughs> is, is, is this world um, actualizing itself? Is it self-generating better and better versions of itself? Or is it in a disorganized, fractured uh, state because you can't even get the basic needs, basic needs met and... Um, People aren't aren't even encouraged to do so. But anyway, let's let's just continue here because there's so much, so much to talk about with Maslow, and I can't stress enough, you know, the importance here with regard to Hyperionism. This is re now remember this is a loose model. It's not you know, it's not 100% accurate, but it's 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 a helpful generalization. Um, so another trait shared by self actualizers is their tendency to be free from the constricting need. Uh, where am I here? So they're free from the constricting need for social acceptance and the obsession many people have with social comparison. Rather than looking to others for approval or to social standards or authorities who to determine how to live, such individuals define matters of judgment uh, to their own conscience. And this is, this is, this is, the, you know, this is the Nietzschean idea of the Ubermensch or Overman. This is the the self-created, autonomous, powerful, self-creating uh, individual who who is is constantly uh, growing and overcoming and transforming themselves. Now, the only thing is that you know Nietzsche went a little overboard on individualism, and in that we also want to take the collective into account. We don't want to be that's that's the important thing. We want to be helping each other. And not uh, that's the problem is you don't want to. That's why it's the quality of life for every individual and the collective, because you you want to make sure that it works together in a cohesive unity. Because think about it this way. If we just said quality of life for every individual and not quality of life for every individual and the collective. Well, here's the problem with that. If let, let's just take one individual and say we give them, you know, a great quality of life. You don't want to do it at the expense of others. Now, so for example, look at the billionaire class, you know, look at, you know, Bezos and, and all of them. They have a fantastic quality of life, don't they? But it's at the great expense of others. And so they they have not, they have, they are the furthest thing from the status of transcendence. They are, they are not helping self, people self-actualize. They are preventing others from self-actualizing. So that's why we want to have the quality of life increase for every individual and the collective so that we are all growing and learning together and not stepping on each other or, or you know how this world does today where a few people have a good life and then the rest must suffer because of the imbalance uh there's there's there is enough to go around for everyone to have oh a much more fulfilled life than even these fucking billionaires have like these billionaires are still i'm still still probably riddled with with uh, depression and 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 un and they're probably not satisfied. I don't not even probably they're they can't they're not satisfied. They're they I'm sure are uh, have have so many psychological problems because they are you know it's at the expense of themselves and others that they have gotten to where they are because this world rewards uh, sick actions and sick behavior. So anyway. Maslow, this is a quote by Maslow, self-actualizers have become strong enough to be independent of the good opinion of other people or even their affection. The honors, the status, the rewards, the popularity, the prestige, and the love they can bestow must have become less important than self-development and inner growth. And that's what I was saying earlier about there's nothing wrong with wealth and status, but that shouldn't that may come with self-actualization. That's not what you do at the expense of self-actualization. And that's exactly what Maslow is saying here, is that the honors, the status, and the rewards, the popularity, the prestige become less important than self-development and inner growth. 
that's what that's that's you know f not, if wealth and status whatever whatever but what's really important is inner growth and self-development and self-actualizers know that so with this basic understanding of self-actualization we are left with an important question if all of us can, in principle, self-actualize, why do so few of us end up doing so? Why, in other words, do most of us become more complacent, more conformist, bitter, and neurotic as we age, rather than more individualized, joyous, creative, and productive? Maslow spent much time deliberating this question, and to answer it, he suggested that there exists regressive forces in the psyche which inhibit growth. This is important. So we must, Maslow says, we must understand that the dark forces are as normal as the growth forces. So while most of us will claim that actualizing our potentials is something we desire to do, in reality, we are often far more attracted by the easy path of safety and comfort. The humanity almost always chooses uh, the path of least resistance. Humanity loves what is easy. They don't like what is hard. They don't like what is difficult. They don't like what is challenging. And that's why they never get anything that's rewarding or satisfying. We avoid, we avoid challenges which would lead to personal growth, refuse to face up to our fears, and remain passive in a manner which inhibits our capacity to self-actualize. And I'll give you an example for me. There's a lot of different things that I've overcome in, in my life that I could talk about. But one of those things is public speaking. I wanted to um, become a performer. Uh, in, in, in my younger years, and, and I did become a performer, but I had a terrible fear of public speaking. So obviously, I would not be able to self-actualize without facing up to that fear. So I started performing like at least twice a week. Uh, I took a course in public speaking. I went to open mic nights. I did all these different things to constantly subject myself to my fear to overcome that fear because it was standing and impeding in the way of me becoming the best version of myself that I can possibly be. And... That's hard. That's difficult. And most people won't do that. There, there will be something that, that's difficult or challenging that's in the way of their self-actualization, and they'll never overcome that challenge because it's too hard. And it is really hard. I get that. But nothing that is worth anything is, is easy. So uh, let's see. A gold stare. Thank you so much for that super chat. And uh, I want to just mention real quick, a uh, gold stare is very awesome in overcoming uh, challenges. Um, they, uh, you know, I don't want to um, point out exactly what because, you know, for, for privacy reasons, but um, they are very, very fantastic at facing fears and overcoming challenges. And I've seen this and uh, that's absolutely fantastic. Great, great case in point. I just want to mention that that reminded me. So. Uh, the pull of these regressive forces places us in a dangerous position, for if we allow ourselves to succumb to them, then over time we will pay a steep price. Anxiety, guilt, shame, and self-hate will manifest and torture us internally. But the presence of these symptoms does not necessarily mean that all is lost. Rather, as Maslow suggests, if we can learn to view these symptoms not as a sign that we are ill, and in need of medication, but rather as a cry from the growth forces within, warning us that a change in our life is needed. We will have taken the first step towards becoming a self-actualizer, and thus one of those rare individuals who succeed in being human. And we want to be much higher than human, that's for sure. Now, uh, real quick, you know, don't take this too literally. If your doctor has prescribed you medication, please continue to take medication. Don't always listen to your doctor. Always listen to healthcare uh, uh, professionals. Medication is extremely important um, and, and, and can help you uh, in your path of self-actualization. So I just wanted to point that out real quick. But anyway, the whole point is, though, is if you are having these difficulties, that may be a symptom showing you that you need to strive to self-actualize. So this is another quote by Maslow. He who belies his talent, the born painter who sells, see this is really important, the born painter who sells stockings instead. And, and that, that's, and when it says the born painter who sells stockings instead, that, that's not, that doesn't even mean someone who maybe went to art school and become a became a painter but for some reason couldn't couldn't do it and failed um and so had to sell stockings it means that they never even tried they never even knew they had this potential to be a painter but they never even picked up a paintbrush 
because either this world didn't give them the needs necessary, supply the needs necessary to be able to do that, or because they were simply too lazy. So do you see, this is about all the potentials that never even see the surface, all these potential painters that never have pay, you know, picked up a paintbrush, all these potential poets who've never written anything uh, in, in, in that form, all these potential musicians who have never picked up an instrument in their life. And you look at this sea of bland, banal mediocrity, and it, but it's filled with the potential vibrance. It's like seeing a bunch of, of, of seeds now, they all look very boring. They all look very plain, but they all have this potential to blossom and grow into wildly beautiful, varied, and and actualized uh, flowers, and 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 will create a beautiful garden. And that's what we have today with all these people out here, the bland, banal, mediocre uh, masses. But they have this amazing potential within them, and that's what we want to do in the Hyperion New World, where we want to in New Terra, where we want to make what is potential become actual by providing not just the basic needs, but everything that they need to flourish. That's like giving those seeds all the necessary conditions, all the, you know, the right water, the right nutrients, the right, uh, you know, temperature, the right moisture in the air, the, the everything, everything. And uh, unfortunately, this world doesn't do that. And so we, we just have this bland, gray, banal world, but we can have uh, such a beautiful world because you have all these Everyone has 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 infinite potential within within themselves. Um, so this, you know, Maslow was talking about the painter who sells stockings instead, the intelligent person who lives a stupid life, the man who sees the truth and keeps his mouth shut, the coward who gives up his manliness. And you know, I don't like this gender specific uh, language, but but you get the idea. All these people perceive in a deep way that they have done wrong to themselves and despise themselves for it. So they might not even be consciously aware, this might be an unconscious thing, but 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 people will, will grow to despise themselves because they never did anything meaningful. They could have been a painter, but they sold stockings instead. They could have been a musician, but you know, they they did 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 whatever. And sometimes it's because the world forces you to. You know, sometimes if you have to fight for food or f fight for income, um, that's that's unfortunately the world we live in but if it's because one is just simply lazy you know that's another story uh, but anyway this this um, self-despising will grow even if it's unconscious because they never fulfilled what they could be out of this self-punishment may come only neurosis but there may equally come renewed courage righteous indignation increased self-respect because of thereafter doing the right thing in a word growth and improvement can come through pain and conflict so in other words you know if they feel this despise for themselves but recognize it and then make change and then they can you know step into who they are and have growth and improvement through through that pain and conflict and that we talk about that all the time in hyperionism is how struggle leads to growth. So that's the thing. When we create a new world, uh, we don't want to eliminate struggle. Struggle is really important. We don't want unnecessary suffering. You see, there's a difference between suffering and struggle. We don't want a world with unnecessary suffering. We, But we do want a world with struggle because overcoming is what allows us to grow and actualize and flourish. One must struggle to become a great musician by struggling through playing that you know instrument every single day. One must struggle to become a philosopher by reading the different books and taking the courses. One uh, becomes a... A great painter by struggling through, you know, so many failed paintings. But the idea here is that, is that we don't have to have the suffering in the world that this world has through, you know, people starving because they don't have food on the table, uh, you know, people being uh, attacked by, you know, hate groups and all these different things that, that you know, <laughs> worrying about nuclear war, all these things that, that this world uh, imposes upon one. We want to undo all that, but we don't want to get rid of struggle. Struggle is necessary for growth. Struggle is, but one can enjoy the struggle. One can, uh, you know, rejoice in the struggle. Struggle doesn't have to, we, one does not have to struggle with struggle. It's just like when you play a video game, 
you struggle to beat the different levels. It'd be a very boring game if every single level was absolutely easy. Who would play that game? Games are fun because it involves a certain amount of struggle because you overcome, and guess what? You get that elation when you overcome a struggle. That's why games are fun. It's this, this barrier that you overcome, and then you get that reward, that elation that you have done so. And that's why we want a, a world that, that, that gets rid of unnecessary suffering, but includes struggle, but in such a way where it's fun and enjoyable because you're overcoming, and you you're leveling up like in a game and you're ga you're getting that um, these rewards and and experience and everything that comes the immense satisfaction that comes with becoming who you truly are so let's you know as I said there's so much to talk about in uh, for Maslow so this video is most likely going to be um, a two-parter because we didn't even talk about his life he went through such tragic things um, and and I'm sure that this shaped his his view on the world because of what he had to grow through. Um, and I'll have to give a trigger warning because some of the stuff that he went through was absolutely horrible. But um, so this will definitely be a two parter. But I hope you can see how important Maslow's work is to Hyperionism and inner star actualization, and especially that tier of uh, transcendence. You know that we use the extended hierarchy. That's so important. I can't emphasize enough the level of transcendence, which is the need for helping others to self-actualize because then we have a world that is a network of self-actualization we were we are all becoming who we're capable of and helping each other become who are, we are capable of and then through that we create a world that is becoming all that it is capable of well, I hope you uh, enjoyed this, my friends, and um, I want to give a big shout out to everyone who supports on Patreon, uh, especially Trent, Cassidy, Renaissance, Michael, Evie, Alan, Angela, Maria, Brian, John, Chubby Bunny, and High Expectations Counseling. If you uh, enjoy my work, consider supporting on Patreon. Helps out a lot, and you get access to our weekly secret live streams and our hidden Discord server, The Citadel. If you ever feel like you've learned something or or gained something from my videos, consider supporting. Uh, it's it really does help a lot, and the link will be popping up right over here. I appreciate it very much.